What's going on guys, Zach here, and welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about creating your first game, game design in that first game, and what it really takes to do such a thing, right? So I've made videos in the past about how to uh, go about creating your first game through a hierarchy of a set of games. And if you wanna see that video, I'll go ahead and link you on the screen now. Um, and I've also talked about game design. And I actually went across a, a, a really good video talking about game design by Jonathan Blow. I'll put it up right here as well. And go ahead and check that out because it was really actually cool to see and uh, sort of see his process in creating all of these little different games to creating a uh, what he made into Braid and The Witness. Generally speaking, the first sort of game that I would create and which I have actually created through So Much Blood, uh, which will be released soon, is you don't want to go into this complex sort of game that's going to take months and months and months and months and then next thing you know months and months turns into years and you never made it even if you get to that point of creating a, a game years into it uh, it's a lot harder than it looks to create these sort of games so you want to start small of course right you don't want to create these huge games and at least to start out with you know and you can get into these more complex games as you get comfortable with it you know so if you're not comfortable or haven't released a game yet then you shouldn't be comfortable with starting out these uh, huge RPG games and that should make sense what you want to do is start out with a very basic design of a game and through the game design by uh, uh, event that I linked to earlier you should see that, you know, Jonathan Blow, he didn't go through and create Braid just from the beginning. He actually had a, a set of ideas for games uh, and prototyped them out and played them out and see if they worked or not. So a prototype is really essential for it. I created a prototype for my upcoming game, So Much Blood. It's a pretty cool little prototype, but it taught me a lot about game design. And through that prototype, things were changed, and it's such a minimalist prototype. But just even through that, I, I learned so much. So prototype out your games, especially if you're gonna go in it for the long haul, and you wanna create a, an actual game that you're gonna release onto a marketplace, and you wanna have under your name, right? You don't wanna be making games that you don't wanna have under your name. Now that's not to say that you can't make bad games or try new things out but you want to make sure the quality is still there, right? Even if it's a game that that it was just a, a, an idea but it didn't work out, then you wouldn't go through the process of releasing it because you would prototype it first and realize, oh, okay, this doesn't work. Rather than starting out the process of creating the game from, you know, from scratch, getting all of the art for it first, you know, spending all of this time developing something that doesn't even really work so prototype your game out that's that's the number one step for uh, creating games if you want to actually get into this market as an indie game developer so with so much blood I prototyped it out I realized things worked and things didn't work and I changed them you know a lot of people dislike the uh, the uh, two-way shooting in my in the game just based off of trailer gameplay right so they're seeing this trailer and they're seeing, you know, these this this player that can only shoot left and right, yet they haven't played the game yet. So it's really when I did prototype out the first game, I actually had all direction 360 degree shooting, but it just didn't feel right. And when I when I changed it to a 2D uh, shooting system where it was left and right, it felt so much better, and it it actually locked in. The, the main mechanic for the game, which is the shooting system. And it's really cool to see it come to life now that it's complete and uh, uh, have it work out exactly how I wanted it to work out. So after you prototype your game, you're gonna wanna go ahead and go into development of this game. Now, like I said before, you wanna start small with your games. You don't want to be creating these huge MMOs. So create something that's gonna take you one to three months to create, which is exactly what I did. Actually, 
I thought I could get this game done in one month, it turned into four months. And that was without really adding any other features into the game. And that's just because I've never gone through the process of releasing something onto Steam for a, a commercial release for you guys. I want to make the quality as best as I can, right? I don't want to cut corners. I want to put this under my name as something that I, I really, really love and that you guys will love. The general rule for that is if you're going to say, okay, this is going to take me a month to create or two months to create, and you don't quite know exactly uh, yourself and your abilities to do so, I would multiply that by one and a half or even multiply it by two because things are going to come up challenges are going to come up things that you might not even thought of are going to come up i've had numerous challenges creating this game that i've had to spend days and days on where i which i thought wasn't even going to be an issue which is just going to be a breeze and it turns out that there were a lot of different hurdles that i had to go through with just doing that so this is all coming through my experiences of so much blood and showing you guys exactly what I learned from it, right? So right now we're in the Steam uh, sort of stage where we're getting it prepped to go onto Steam and the release date will be coming out soon with an official trailer. If you haven't seen the teaser trailer, I'll put that up right there as well. But this is gonna be the first official game that I've released on Steam for a price point. And it's really cool. So go over a couple steps that we've just talked about. What I want you to do is I want you to get a good game idea that's simple, easy. It doesn't have to be an MMO, but it doesn't have to be as simple as a Pong game remastered. You know, you can have your own ideas in there, and it can take a, a, a fair amount of time to make. But you got to keep in respects of your limits and what you can do as an indie developer. And because you don't know yourself as an indie developer yet, you need to. It, it's really hard to kind of judge: Can I do this in this amount of time? So create a cool, simple game idea, okay? Prototype that game idea, see if it works, if it doesn't work, give it to your friends, give it to your family, have them play the game, just the prototype, and obviously you can tell them, you know, oh, you know, there's no arc in here yet, you know, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, you know, all the features aren't in there, but it's just the main mechanic and core of the game. And when you show them uh, the game, don't tell them, oh, oh, this is how you do this and this is how you do that. Just let, let them play the game. Don't say anything and watch them play it. And if, if they have fun or if they can't quite grasp something, like it's a puzzle game with a new mechanic and they can't quite understand it, then maybe look back and say, okay, why couldn't they understand that? Really get the full idea of how your game is playing out to other people. And if they can't understand it, I wouldn't say make, the, make it very user friendly by putting on the screen, this is how you do this, this is how you do that, because I don't like that in games. But you can aid them in level design and uh, make it easier in the beginning and then put in the full mechanic later. So that's just a little idea. So prototype out the game, you can go into an official project where you can hire artists, or if you're an artist, that's even better. You can get music guys, you can get everything set up for the long haul. And uh, this is what I've learned from So Much Blood, so go ahead and like, go and subscribe. Let me know if you want more of these uh, Zach Talks sort of things. I've got plenty of experiences and uh, things that I can show you guys or talk about. And if you guys have any suggestions on what you guys want me to talk about, my opinions on anything, then go and leave it in the comments. So thanks for watching, guys. Peace.